So this week I, I had a meeting, and uh, Bob, I thought we had planned to wear gray suits today. That's not so gray, Bob. That's blue. It's dark gray. I don't have one that matches that. So I had a meeting this week, and when I left that meeting, you, you ever have those conversations with people that you love, and you, you leave those conversations, and you, you just, uh, something just doesn't seem right, it just doesn't feel right, and, and you're wondering, Lord, did I say something wrong, did I do something I shouldn't, did I misrepresent your character? I had one of those meetings this week, and uh, there were like 14 other people in that meeting, and on the way home, uh, I called Melanie, and Melanie and the girls were busy. And so I said, okay, plan B. I called my brother, Donald, and uh, said, hey, brother. Hey, man, how you doing? I was like, boy, man, I just had this meeting. I described a little bit. Of course, he's a neutral party, has no idea who I'm talking about. And, and uh, I said, I just needed to hear the voice of someone that I knew loved me. That's what I needed to hear. So we chatted for a couple of minutes and then, hey, talk to you later. It was, it was a good conversation. Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, just wanted to share something with the disciples because he knew that the disciples loved him, yet they were going to go through a hard time. Open your Bibles with me to the New Testament book of John. The New Testament book of John, chapter 13, John chapter 13, and verse 1, John the 13th chapter and the first verse, and the Word of God reads in John 13 and verse 1, now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. Verse 2, And supper being ended, the devil, having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he was come from God and went to God, he rose from supper, laid aside his garments, and took a towel and girded himself. Now, what happens after Jesus girds himself with that towel? He washes the disciples' feet, right? You get over to verse 12. So after he had washed their feet, he had taken his garments and was set down again. He said unto them, this is chapter 12 of, sorry, verse 12 of chapter 13 in the book of John. John 13, 12. He said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me master and Lord, and that's the right thing because that's who I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you ought also to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If you know these things, happy are you if you do them. Jesus goes on to say that one of you is going to betray me. And then he gives them the indication as to who that's going to be, the one that dips the bread with me. Verse 31, therefore, when he was gone out, Jesus said, that's when Judas left. Jesus said, now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. You keep going down in chapter 13, and Peter says, I will lay my life down for you in verse 37. And Jesus says to him, you will lay your life down for my sake? The truth is, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Then he says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Thomas, after Jesus finishes, Thomas says, says, Lord, where are you going? We don't know where you're going. Philip says, show us the Father, and that will be sufficient for us. 
And Jesus begins talking to these disciples after he has washed their feet, after they have participated in what you and I know as communion or the Lord's Supper or the Last Supper, and he talks to them. The rest of 14, the rest of 15, verse 16. If you have a red letter edition Bible, there's a couple of clarification verses that John gives us in chapter 16. And then you get to chapter 17 and Jesus is still speaking. They are still in the upper room following supper. Jesus is sharing his heart with his disciples. And Jesus prays in verse 21. Now remember, he has eaten supper with them. He has washed their feet or washed their feet, eaten supper with them. Uh, Judas is going to betray him. Judas leaves. Um, and Jesus shares his heart. And part of his heart is in verse 20 and 21. He says, and Jesus is praying here. Well, go to chapter 18, verse 1. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook Kedron, where was a garden into which he entered and his disciples. So following this occurrence of Jesus having dinner with them, the communion service, Judas leaving, Satan entering G into Judas, Jesus is sharing his heart. And before they leave that room, he says in verse 20, neither do I pray for these alone, but for those also who shall believe on me through their word. Jesus had us on his heart prior to his death in the upper room at the Last Supper. He says, I'm not just praying for those, Father, that are in here with us. I'm praying for those who in the future will believe in me. Verse 21, and notice what Jesus prays for us. After the, the liturgical service of eating the bread together, sharing the juice, Judas is leaving, uh, Jesus shares his heart, he shares it with Peter, Peter doesn't like what he says, and Jesus says, this is the reality, you're gonna die, deny me three, before the rooster crows three times, and before they leave that upper room, Jesus is praying, you and I um, can imagine correctly that the disciples are there as well, and the disciples hear Jesus say in verse 21, this is his heart, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, are in me, and I in you. That they may also be one in us, that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. Now, if you look at the immediate preceding occurrences, Jesus is in the upper room with the disciples. They haven't left yet. And the disciples are hearing Jesus pray, Father, I want them to be one just like you and I are one with each other. I and them, verse 23, you and me, that they may be perfect in one and that the world may know that you have sent me and has loved them as you have loved me. Father, I will that they also, which you have given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which you have given me, for you loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you, and these have known that you have sent me, and I have declared unto them your name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. This is the result that Jesus expected from washing each other's feet and participation in the Lord's Supper or communion. Amen. That the love that you have loved me with will be in them and I in them. 
Sometimes we go through communion exercises just simply because it's what we do one, one Sabbath per every quarter and that's just the way it goes in the Adventist church. Jesus' purpose was so that you and I could understand the depth of the love of the Father and so that we could also experience God in us. And so that's what we're doing today. We're not just eating bread and getting uh, new sock fuzz out between each other's toes. <laughs> the reality is that you and I are participating with Christ. This was intended by Jesus to be one of those services that we go through, that we come out on the other side of closer to him than when we started. And so, that's what we're going to do now. We're going to separate for foot washing service. And when you go out these double doors, there'll be a set of double doors to your left, which is a fellowship hall. The first set of double doors you come to is going to be for the couples. Then you walk down the hall. The next door you come to on the left is going to be for ladies. And the second door on the right down the hall will be for men. Now, don't just go wash each other's fuzzy feet. Think about how this church exercise is going to enable you to be closer to Jesus. Let's pray. Lord, we're going to do what Jesus did. We don't have a towel to wrap around us, but we've got towels. We don't have to wash each other's feet in the same dirty water, but we do have water. We're not using that same basin for all of the disciples. We are using different basins. But we are doing this in hopes that the reality of your promise will be exhibited in our lives, that even though we are different people, we are one with each other, exhibiting the love that you, Father, shared with us in Jesus, exhibiting the love that you, Jesus, shared with us through your life, and exhibiting the love that you, Holy Spirit, continue to pour into us every day. As we participate in this service, whose result will be that we may be one with God the Father and God the Son, as the two of you are one with each other. May we realize something significant today, that you want us to be love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.